A recap and clarification of what you need for doing the wrapping on the leather. Something sharp to cut the leather with. I'll probably end up using these scissors, actually, I like them. Something to make a couple marks in the leather with where you'll be cutting. And, of course, your bit of leather. We'll end up cutting that to length. I use a Dremel with a drum sander bit for skiving. Again, the knives that we have over there can be used for skiving instead. A scrap piece of cloth. There's more of my cording to do the outer wrap and leave the lines in the leather. A little bit of water for soaking your leather. It softens it up and it makes it so the tooling marks from the outer wrap will show. I've actually started using for the last several grips uh, weld bond glue. This is an all-purpose for wood, fabrics, so on. It's very strong, but it's got a long drying time. It gives you a lot of time to work with. I apply it with a brush. Behind that you'll see I use Phoebing's dye, and that's the acrylic resoline that I'll seal it with. I use some saddle soap. Just I'll show you how, just as something to offset a little bit of color in the leather before I put dye on it. And of course some crazy glue. I use that just along one edge when I'm setting the leather to the grip. So this is what I use. Oh, and I almost forgot. I like to use a sliding clamp to hold everything in place while the glue dries. All right, first step is going to be sizing this up. So what I need to figure out here is uh, how to shape a piece of leather that I'm gonna wrap around the grip. I like to leave a good amount on each end to allow for it pulling in perhaps as you wrap it and just make sure that the sides are going to be matched up properly to put it around with a little bit of overlap. You do want to follow the shape of the grip a little bit when you're considering this so this is going to belly out a little in the middle just as the grip does, uh, the piece of leather that is. So imagine you're lining it up where the seam underneath is going to be somewhere across the middle of the grip or the side rather, the middle of the side. Some people like to tape down this edge of their leather while they're practicing the wrapping, while they're getting it in place. I'm going to consider my overlap. So I have a line to work with now that I can cut to. I always like to leave a little extra to begin with, easier to take away. This is a nice stretchy leather which helps give me a little bit of wiggle room as well. So I think that's going to work pretty good. You know, and match up all right. It might have a little much on the belly here, but I can trim that down as I need to. I like that. I'm going to now skim and my these work is all side, roughed up and chopped up along the edges. That's why you see the scrap piece of wood here. Pay attention to the direction your Dremel spinning. This is going to make and a lot of always fine skim dust on the inside of the leather, never on the exposed side. That way, your overlap always looks nice and clean. You're not uh, if you start skiving on the exposed side of the leather, the top grain side and you don't line things up perfectly when you're wrapping it, you're going to see the rough marks from the skiving. If you do everything on the inside, it still overlaps perfectly, but all you have is a nice leather shell. One thing you want to watch out for is if you're getting a frayed edge like that. That's why a little bit of overlap is also going to help. I can trim this frayed edge off later on, but only if I've left enough room for it. A uh, different leather is going to react differently as well. So this being very stretchy and soft, it's going to tend to want to fray more. It's getting there. It's okay. I can thin it up a little more. I'm not liking how much it's fraying, so I'm actually going to wet it a little bit. J jams up the uh, 
standing drum, but prevents the praying. So that helped the skiving, but I have some edges to clean up, so I'm just going to make a nice straight cut across each edge. Make sure that I've got enough left to do the wrap. Trim the edge a little bit. And I want to make sure it's still going to have enough room to overlap. Here we go. And I know this seems going to work. So, now that I've skived it, got my edges pretty good, I need to soak the whole piece of leather for a while. Probably about 15 or 20 minutes. Oh, uh, maybe not something this thin, maybe 10 will work. The leather has been soaking for, I probably only actually did it for maybe seven minutes just now. That's plenty for as thin as this leather is. And I've pressed it between two pieces of cloth here to draw out most of the water. See it's nice and dark. That's a sign that what it's I ready do next roll. is take one of the edges and with a very fine bit of thin strip of crazy glue hold it down so that I can begin to wrap it. Crazy glue hardens the leather a lot, so you don't want to use a lot of this stuff. You'll have a hard spot and there won't be anything you can do as far as tooling it. Just putting a couple drops of it on the seam. See that, I'll bring it into the camera, can see. So I've got it held on in just a couple of spots, maybe just a little bit more down here will help set that off. When I'm at the uh, riser, I don't mind creating a little bit of riser shape while I'm doing that bit. And I'm paying attention that I'm wrapping it more or less across the middle. Sorry, I keep watching my piece instead of the camera. It's important I get this in the right spot to begin with. That's it. Now I'm going to take my glue and my brush and I begin applying it to the surfaces. When I'm doing this part, I don't worry so much about on the outside of each riser yet. I'll do that kind of at the end, I'll show you. I just tuck some glue in there and fold everything over. Here I definitely want enough glue everywhere, through the middle. Be careful about getting glue on your fingers. You want to make sure that none of this glue touches the outside of the leather. It will screw up the dye. And the other thing I do is I don't bring the glue all the way to the edge yet where the leather is. I don't bring it into all the way up to here yet. As you're wrapping and pushing, the glue is going to push itself to your seam anyway. So there's that. Glue pretty much around the whole thing. And I begin wrapping. You want to start by bringing the leather around, pressing it in as you go. So bringing the leather around, pressing in as you go. matching up the shape of it. Watch for glue. That's why we keep the cloth around. That's why it's nice to use a craft glue like this because it gives you a little bit of water solubility. I'm lining things up nice and tight as I go. You're going to find some twisting on any curved grip. You want to pull your leather tight 
to avoid that. Looks good. Kind of keep going. You do want to play around with it a little bit and find that good spot where everything comes together nicely. You know, shape it. That's why you made it soft with the water. To shape it. Check if your seam is going to come up the middle. Now that I've got everything wrapped, I want to come just up to the edge with the glue. But you always want to leave it a little bit away from the final edge because as you wrap this tight with cord, it's going to press glue out, out of the seam. Get your cord, start up against a riser, and I'm tie do it up. So the camera can show the camera what I'm doing. Well, what I am doing is tying this right underneath or right against the edge of one of the risers, and I like to make my knots at the seam. I'm actually, there we go. I like to leave my knot right at the seam. Even if you can't get it right against the riser right now. Tie it down. Tie it off. Wrap, and when you wrap, let's get some extra here. When you wrap, wrap in the direction you've wrapped the leather. So you're pressing the seam down, not pushing against the seam with every wrap. And my first one, I'm actually going to come back against the uh, riser one more time to create a good indentation in there. And then I'm going to continue uh, wrapping. As you're doing this wrapping, you're going to see glue and moisture than the water pressing its way out of the leather that's good the water is good because that means you're going to leave a nice mark in the leather from the cord the glue is fine to see moving around but you don't want to see it come out of the seam anywhere that glue dries on exposed leather the dye won't take as well I'm going to keep wrapping, pause the tape here, and show you when I get to a middle point. Once you point. start soaking your leather and wrapping the cord on the outside, it's go time. Finish it. Set aside enough time to get it's this no done. It's no good to stop and start again. Every time you do that to the leather, it, I notice at least it dries out a bit more each time. It doesn't take the marks as evenly. So make sure that you're ready to go. Have enough time set aside to do everything. I'm pulling quite tightly while I'm wrapping this around and I can see a bit of glue pressing through here now. That's why I like using this glue. I can wash that away with no ill effect to the leather. Anticipate that's going to happen in a couple more spots, so just clean that for the next little bit that I go along. Something that's not really going to be doable with an epoxy I found. That's why I like using this stuff. Uh, one more thing now. about when you're cleaning off any bit of glue that's pressed its way over is unravel one or two turns on the uh, cording and see if the glue is under the cording now because when it presses out it might push just a little bit under a couple of rows. That'll make sure that you don't have any glue that's now gluing the cording down and you don't have on one of those spots where the leather isn't going to uh, accept the dye quite as well because the glue is you know on the exposed How I wrap it is to always keep turning the grip and holding the string tight in my hand. So I've got it tight this way. Nice tight grip in my hand and I'm guiding it with my thumb and forefinger and I'm turning the grip so that I can always see the part I'm pressing down onto the grip as opposed to wrapping it around that way. When you do it that way you end up with loose spots on the side you're not watching. This way I keep everything right up against each other the whole way through. You may also find that just from working the leather and having your hands on the grip, it's drying out. So 
just as you would if you were doing a tooling work on any leather, pat it down again with a bit of a damp, a damp cloth or damp sponge. That'll help draw just a little bit of water back in that your hands have started to take out of it as you work. Be vigilant when you're checking that the glue is coming all the way up to the seam. The opposite of having too much glue under there and pressing it through is that the last bit here, maybe the last quarter or eighth inch, is not getting any glue. That's no good either. And be mindful of your seam as you work. Have you shifted it too much from stretching the leather? You want to make sure that you can see it as you travel, that it's coming across the center the when whole time. When you get time. to the high point and start coming down into a narrow side, the cording is going to want to draw itself to the narrowest point. So you've got to be, again, extra careful to make sure that you're keeping it tight to the rest of the wrap so that the spacing that you're creating here, the look you're creating of this cord wrap tooling into the leather looks even Came throughout across the grip. a spot on the grip here where I was getting a ripple uh, a fold from the tightening from of the cording. I just pulled on it here to stretch it up and out. Flatten the leather with my finger a little bit and eliminate that fold. Sometimes on the very complex grips, complex shapes, you need to do that the whole way through, constantly pressing, be pressing and moving the grip. Uh, and since you need to have a nice even seam, the only way that you have enough leather to do that is to leave a lot on the uh, end. So I'm at the riser. I cut my string because I know I don't need more right now. Making a simple knot right up against it. I've actually got one root. The loop just before this knot is the one that's the one is the loop against the riser. Now I'm tightening it down. And I'll tie it off. And here's how I actually like to do this part. I'm going to get this stuff down where it needs to go. Get rid of any excess glue. And then use my clamp to hold it in place. Then do the last wrap on the other side of the uh, riser. Pretty good. That'll take all right to the wrap around it. Here I've got a lot of extra, a lot of excess. So. We'll bring that excess to the seam. We'll let it build up at the seam where it would be anyway. It's going to press down pretty tight. And that part's pretty thin to begin with, what with the uh, skiving. And the same, I want some glue in here. It's good. So I've got my ends pressed in. I'm going to clamp it up now. Got to be careful here that you don't push your ends out while you're clamping. Instead you're tightening it all down together. That looks pretty good. Now that I've got it clamped up I can do the last bit of tying around the risers. Tighten that up. Again, trying to keep the knot at the seam. Tie it off so that it's tight. I don't need all this extra. And then tighten it down.
I'm going to tie this off to the actual clamp for the last bit so it's a nice and tight knot. I'll do the same for this end now, tie it up, and then it's got to sit. All right, there it is, all wrapped up. And I will let this sit for at least a full day like this, uh, like a 24 hour day, giving it plenty of time for the leather to dry out and the tooling marks from the cording to set.